there, nice black plastic, plastic tube there, and we're going to stick a bottle in the end of it, just cut the end of this off so it's like a restricted trap, put some bait in the middle and then we're going to wedge this down in the rocks. Um, cut through this, on the back of the knife on the coast on the knife you've got the serrated point there which is a rope cutting section primarily. Um, when you want to cut rope under tension, especially if we're like anchored for some, if we've got something fixed to the rocks and the tide's pulling it backwards, it doesn't matter how sharp your knife is, it's very difficult to cut for a rope under tension, especially past the rope, the rope is folding on it. That's why we use the rope cutting section on the back. It's also handy when we want to abuse something like this and just cut through it, because it's, it's literally straight through the plastic with that bit where you can imagine with a sharp knife trying to cut through it. So it's got multiple uses as far as that's concerned. So we've got a nice hidey hole there for the shellfish or crabs or prawns to hide in. And remember, they're trying to sort of hide from the, um, the seabirds and what predators are trying to get down onto them. So we're going to put this underneath a rock and all we want to do now is put a restricted entrance into it so we know that kind of just fits in and we'll wedge that in with something and again using the back of the knife can quite easily just to slice it to get into it and then we could use the sharp section for going around on it and that's why it's made of stainless steel because we're obviously down there cutting through using it in salt water and that's why it's not got a handle on it because anywhere there's a handle you're going to get the salt building up so whatever tools you bring down there make sure they can survive the sea We'll go back and wash them out with clean water straight away, you know, a little bit of soapy water. So we're going to fillet this flat fish and we're looking for two equal fillets and we're going to go straight down the lateral line, down the middle of the fish like this. And when we hit the bone, we're going to stop and then trace the bone to take the fillet off. So it's literally just cutting straight down it in a line and you'll find that it hits the bone there. There's a central sort of ridge, a bit like the spine on it. And what happens is you're either going to go one side of it or the other. See, when you run your finger down there, if you're lucky, I've gone straight on the middle, you'll feel the ridge of bone, okay? Then we just cut straight across the other side to the stomach, and then we can start to take the first fillet off. Now, remember, you've just got to keep close to the bone, so go in a little bit with your knife, elevating it until it starts to par back. And just using the tip and always making sure you can hear the bone. As long as you can hear the bone, you're not going to waste flesh. Worst thing that's going to happen is if you really mess it up, you can make a fish pie with it. And you can see that I'm just drawing and I'm pressing. Most of the pressure is with the tip of the knife onto the skeleton. And all I'm doing is using just this end section just to li lift the fillet. Obviously, it's going to really help if you've got a nice sharp knife like so this. Is that a special knife that you're using? Yeah, this is my coast hunting knife. demonstrating that not only can it be used for heavy work but beautiful and that's what I'm looking for. Wow, smoky. <laughs>